Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Lair Belair. Today, I want to share with you this project that I'm working on. It's a yo-yo. This is going to be a LED yo-yo using the Adafruit Circuit Playground board. So it's going to be several pieces that screw together. And I wanted to show you guys in this tutorial how I'm using uh, coils uh, to make custom threads. So in another tutorial, I showed you how one of the methods I use to make, create custom threads I sort of did a bit of an optimization, and it's more practical since I'm using it in this project. So I wanted to share with you guys sort of an updated technique to that. So what I'm showing you right now is the cover, which is going to be machined out of acrylic. So you can see through uh, the 3D printed pieces, and the circuit playground board will be right there. And on the other bottom half here, I'm going to have a battery. and if you look underneath the cover and underneath the top and underneath the board, I have an axle with a hole in it. It's a little bore so that I can wire up, um, so I can pass the wire through this into this piece here and then wire that into the JC connector on the circuit playground board. There's, there's no machine screws. There's just like standoffs with pegs. And there's some openings for the USB port, and there'll be a slide switch to turn the battery on and off. Uh, but that's it. So this is going to screw together here. So if I do a section analysis, you can see um, how the axles uh, get screwed into this uh, piece here. And then the bottom and top area have uh, threads as well, so that they can screw in these uh, these covers here. So this bottom cover won't have an acrylic piece. It'll just be uh, a flat 3D printed bottom and it'll screw top. And the thing about these uh, these coils is they're really optimized for 3D printing in the sense that they are fully 45 degree angles and so there's no support material required for them and they're also very very tight. So there's a section size that you can that you can add to your coils. This is a section size of one millimeter which is probably the smallest you can get it at and it has a height clearance of about two millimeters so it's really, really tight coil, and it only revolves uh, 1.5 uh, rev revolutions, so it's pretty tight, and it works really well for these uh, for this type of project. So that's kind of what I'll show you guys with this project. It, I'm still working on it. Um, I'm testing it and all that good stuff, but I just wanted to show you the updated method of creating your own custom uh, threads using coils. So let's go ahead and, and we'll make uh, sort of a, a little demo piece here. So let's say I want to make a cylinder that's about 30 millimeters in diameter. And then let's say I want to make it like 10 millimeters tall. Hit OK. Uh, let's go ahead and make a shell here. And let's do 1.5. That's my favorite. And then we'll make a cover here. So let's go ahead and make a cover. It'll also be 30 millimeters in diameter. I'll hit OK. And then I will extrude this part out. Whoops, wrong button. I think I can do right click, extrude. Yep. Put uh, 1.5. And then we'll hit uh, operation. We'll make it a new body. So hit OK. So now I have my top and then my sort of uh, cup. We can call it a cup. Why not? And I'll do a section size now, a section analysis. So I'll bring up my origins. Hide bodies and click on this face here, or this this plane. And then I'll bring back my body so I can see inside there. All right, so now we have a, a better look at inside our, our little demo piece here. Cool. So the next thing I'll do is I'm going to make our, whoops, I want this guy here. Next thing I'll do is I'll make our coil piece. So to do that, I will go under Create, Coil, and then I'll select this top edge here. Okay, and then now I can start drawing out um, the diameter. So I'll start in the center here, and I'll draw it out to be 30 millimeters exactly. And this is what the coil looks like. It's really big by default. So let's go ahead and modify it down. So the diameter is good. The rotation is good. The type is good. The resolutions, I'm going to put 1.5, which is like it revolves once and a half. <laughs> and then for the height, I'm going to crank it down to just 2 millimeters. And then for the section size, I know I got an error, but that's because the section size is way too big. So I'm going to drop this down to one millimeter. And that's looking OK. So now we need to change the section type, which is right here. I'm going to change that to uh, external. 
nope, let's change it to internal because we're, we're inside of the thing here. So you can see what it works like that. And then you can see here that's the section position. We actually want to have it, I think, on the inside. On the inside, yep. And what's going on here is I should have made it um, this diameter. So I'm going to have to crank it down a little bit. So I think it's going to be 28 or 27. 0.5. No, probably 27. All right. So what we're doing is we're making sure that it's the exact uh, diameter of the of the inside wall of our shell here. So you can see it's actually 27 millimeters, and it's just fine. All right. So you can see how uh, changing our height to two millimeters really makes it pretty tight, but it's not touching itself, so that's pretty good. Or it's not uh, intersecting with itself, so that's really good. And then instead of operation join, I'm going to make it a new body because we're actually going to have to push it down a little bit. So that's pretty much it. I'll hit OK. Now I need to move it. So I'll hit the, I'll click on the body first, and then I'll hit the move key, the move command, and then I'll move it into place. And as long as you're, see this section here? As long as that's like kind of at the top, it's OK. And that's pretty fine. So I'll hit OK. Now we got that. Well, this is going to be pretty tight. So this can be anything, right? This can be a bottle. This can be an enclosure. Uh, this can be a hidden axle or a prop or something that needs to screw into something else. And it has to be a cylinder, obviously. But So I got that now. Now I can do a um, combine. So uh, under Modify, Combine, I combine these two pieces together. Make sure the operation is joined. I'll hit OK. One thing you want to do is you want to um, flatten out this guy here. Or not flatten it out, but chamfer it out. So I'll add a chamfer to this edge and the other edge, which is over here, like that. I'll put point 0.99, because if I put one, it won't let me. So I'm gonna put 9999999, which is pretty close. Or maybe just 99, there you go. And you can see it's pretty, it's really close, like just by a teeny tiny bit, which is fine. So that's that. It won't even make a difference when you print it. It'll just be nice and chamfered out. So cool, so we got that out. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I need to make uh, sort of a lip for this thing here. So um, let's go ahead and look at our section analysis to see what we got working with. All right. Cool. So what I'll do now is I will make our, uh, our lip here. So let's go ahead and make a new circle. It'll be on this edge or on this face. And we'll be able to adjust it here, but I think 27 is probably good. And then I'll do an offset of that by 1.5, negative 1.5. So there you go. So now when we adjust this guy here, like say 25, the uh, the outer area will update with it. So now let's go ahead and extrude this and bring this up to, I believe, 4 or 5, something like that. And then if I bring back this guy and then turn on section analysis, I can see through it. It's a little bit longer, which is fine. It's taller than it needs to be, but that's fine. You can see here that um, it's just barely touching it. I want to have a little bit of clearance area. So let's go ahead and update that sketch, which is this one here. Let's uh, make it a little bit smaller. So I'll put uh, 24.5. Hit OK. Let's see what we got. Yeah, there you go. So now I got a little bit of a clearance from uh, the little tooth of the, the edge of the, uh, the coil, not touching that. Okay, cool. So now we're at a good spot. Now I can add the coil to this guy here. So to do that, um, I will turn off section analysis and I'll go back up to create coil and then select this area. And then I need to make it this diameter because it's gonna be on the outside, not the inside of our cylinder. So 24.5. All right, so let's go ahead and update this stuff here. Resolutions, I'll put 1.5. Uh, let's ch let's quickly change the section size to one millimeter. Height, two millimeters. Change the operation to new body. And then we need to change our section type to external. There you go. And it looks like uh, our position needs to be on the outside. Yeah. So just to make sure that it's on the outside of our cylinder here. That looks good. And um, let's go ahead and hide the sketch. That looks all good. I'll hit OK. 
So now we need to move this body into place. So we can move this down here, like so. And then if we bring back our body and then turn our selection size, we can see um, how, how far we need to be. So you can see it's not in a good spot. So I need to move it probably right there. If I look over here, I think I need to get a little bit more. Let me drag this over here a little bit, maybe seven, maybe six, five. And I want to get it perfectly in the center. That's pretty close. So I think I'll hit OK. All right, let's see what it looks like without the analysis. Turn off body one. And you can see it's starting to um, starting to intersect with our uh, spot here. So what I'll do instead is I'll turn this back on. And I'll move this guy again. But instead of going all the way down, I'm going to go all the way up. So this way right here. So I hit OK. There you go. And then if I turn off analysis, turn off this body. All right, looks like this guy is a little bit, um, the coils is, is higher than our uh, lip here. So I can adjust that by uh, double clicking on that feature in the timeline and make it 4.5 for the distance. Uh, that's not enough, is it? Eh, nope, not enough. So let's make it five. So it's all about tweaking it and making it sure, making sure that everything is uh, kind of for, oh, I see what's going on. As I update it, the um, the coil is moving too, so uh, because it's sort of dependent on that on the top edge there. So I should use this area instead, but that's fine. So what I'll do is I'll move this now, bring back this, turn on section analysis, and then I'll move it down a bit here, like that. Hit OK, and I think that's about it. Well, I need to I need to um, combine them obviously that looks good to me so I'll go ahead and combine these two like that join and okay now I only have two bodies oh yeah we can do a, a chamfer here if I move this chamfer all the way this way I can double click on that and then add this to that feature so I'll have to keep um, adding features so I can do all that with one uh, feature. Cool. So that's it. Can't see through it. If you want to see through it, obviously you got the section analysis, but that's kind of hard to see uh, since it, it, you do need to kind of see the whole thing. So all I'll do is uh, somewhere over here, I'll hit uh, physical materials. Let's take a look at glass. Drop this in. Drop this in. There you go. Maybe the top doesn't need to be see-through. Just There you go. So now you can see how it coils around itself here. Look at that. Got a little bit of a clearance area. It is going to be 3D printed, so you do want to have a tiny bit of clearance like I showed you. So that's it. Pretty cool. It works out really well. I've uh, tested it quite a bit. Let's go ahead and drop this into our uh, modeling our, our, X, our, our slicing software, so save as STL. I'll go ahead and send it to Simplify 3D. So here it is in Simplify 3D. Man, that thing's kind of small, but hey, it's about being pretty small anyway. My co my um, my axle for my for my yo-yo is pretty small. So uh, real quick, take a look at some of the settings. I'm using a 0.4 nozzle with a 100% multiplier, and the extrusion width is set to auto, which makes it 0.48. That's pretty much it. Now, what I do want to talk about is the layer height. I actually found that a layer height of 150 microns or 0.15 millimeters is really good. And then for the advanced, I have the allow gap fill when necessary at 50% for the perimeter overlap. Hit OK. Now, let's go ahead and prepare to print. And you can see how just tiny our coil is. I gotta get used to moving around. There we go. So you can see how it comes in there, like that. You see that has a bit of infill there, tiny bit of infill. And that's how that is. They're just a couple of layers thick. It's pretty optimized, and there's no support necessary for this. You do want to print a little bit slower. I printed this at 60 millimeters a minute or a second, I think it is. 
And let's go ahead and bring in our other piece here, top, right click, save as, STL, bring it in. Uh, I'll hit Command L to place this side here. Now, if I print both of these out at the same time, which I don't recommend, but just to show you what it looks like, you can see it's very, very tight. The more layers you have for this coil, the better, because uh, right now it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight layers. <laughs> But it works out really well. You get a pretty tight fit, even with the the the, um, the allowed clearance. So there you go. Hope this helps you guys out in your uh, projects. I know it helped me out, especially with the circuit playground board, because it is a circular design. Um, this works out perfect. I don't have to use any screws or anything. I got my own 3D printed axle um, that has a screw top and it just screws into that. Works really well for this project. So if I have any other cylindrical projects that need um, um, coils or, or threads, custom threads, this is a great way to do it. Let me guys know what you think in the comments below. If you guys have any tips, uh, let me know in the comments and other folks will be able to see them too. So that's it for this one, guys. I'll see you in the next one. But until then, remember to keep on catting. Bye, guys.